Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Ramadan Mubarak to everyone and it's almost over. There are five days left and this will be our final program for this blessed month of Ramadan. And this final talk, I want to review some lessons going forward. Ramadan will come and go, but we need to gain something out of this month. Um, you know, including the prizes that Allah placed within it. Um, and also the greater lessons for our own lives. So in the Quran, when Allah speaks about Ramadan, the very first verse ends with, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ As we all know, so that which means, so that you may attain taqwa. And then, towards the end of the passage, when Allah speaks about Eid, Allah says, وَلِتُكْمِلُوا الْعِدَّةِ so when Allah speaks about the day of our Eid, which is just around the corner, it's going to be Mosaki on Thursday. The day of our Eid, Allah says, make takbirat, say, you know, glorify Allah, magnify him, say Allahu Akbar. Um, and at the end, Allah says, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ So that you may be grateful. So Ramadan began with لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ and it ends with لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ That's the lesson I want to uh, focus in on um, between taqwa and shukr. That's the month of Ramadan and that should be the lives of the believers. Your whole life should be between taqwa and shukr. If you perfect these two characteristics, if, these, if you perfect these two milestones of faith, of Iman, then this is really what a believer can hope for. Um, really, taqwa, we, we know what taqwa is. Taqwa is that state of God consciousness, that state of reverence, reverential fear of God, uh, where you watch your every step. As Umar ibn al-Khattab defined taqwa, someone asked him what taqwa was, and he replied by saying, have you ever walked on a thorny path? You know, you see how you watch your every step, every step you put down, every foot. Uh, first, you look at the ground and see if there's anything harmful there. So you're not just running through it, but you're mindful of every step. And that's what taqwa is, being mindful of Allah at every step of your life. And we see that in Ramadan, where we were abstaining from food and drink during the daytime. Uh, and we're on our guard, generally speaking. So it's a it's a time period where Allah makes it easier for us to attain this quality of taqwa. But now that we're towards the end, we're looking at the finish line. We're five days away. Now we need to focus on um, the second great lesson of Ramadan and how we end should be with this sense of gratitude, shukr. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ And this is very, very important. Plus one, this is very, very important, this sense of gratitude. That's one of the prizes of faith. It's the essence of one of the essence, uh, one of the essential qualities of Iman. As Ibn al-Qayyim says, it's the twin half of Iman along with Sabr. Uh, shukr is so important. Um, and really, our whole uh, journey of faith has to do with shukr, with gratitude. Um, you know, the, we mentioned the origin story of humanity. You know, that's a very important story of uh, the conversation of Allah with the angels and then with Adam, alayhi salam, and then with the beast, and then um, our forefather Adam being sent to the earth. So at the end of that story, uh, Allah chronicles his conversation with Iblis, Shaitan. And he says, <clears throat> he quotes Shaitan, Shaitan said after this whole saga, uh, Iblis said to Allah, um, I will be waiting for them on your straight path. What is he speaking about? Allah had sent or is sending Adam to live the earth and then his progeny, which is us. And he made this earth a trial, a test. And he placed guidance in this test signs pointing to him as we've been mentioning the last couple of sessions and shaitan is the test so shaitan says i will be waiting for them on the straight path 
ثم لآتينهم من بين أيديهم ومن خلفهم وعن أيمانهم وعن شمائلهم He says, and I will be waiting to attack them from the front and from the rear and from the right and from the left. This is a very scary promise of Iblis that he's not going to leave uh, this earth. He's not going to leave human beings alone. He will be right there on that straight path trying to misguide us and approaching us from the right, from the left, from the front and the rear. And then he says towards the end, at the end he says to Allah, وَلَا تَجِدُ أَكْثَرُهُمْ Shakirin. You will find that most of them are not grateful. Shakirin. So it's interesting that Iblis, his whole master plan to uh, misguide humanity and bring him to the hellfire um, is centered around this idea of shukr. And he promises Allah that he's going to try his best and he uh, hopes that he's going to find or Allah is going to find that most human beings will wind up not being grateful. Uh, so you can see from this origin story of humanity how central the idea of shukr is in the lives in the lives of the believers, and it's part and parcel of you know what it is to be a believer, and it's part of iman itself. And you know the opposite of shukr in Islam is kufr. So kufr is the opposite, you know. Um, so in the Quran, often you have contrasting shukr with kufr, and you know that tells you that it's the it's the opposite, um, you know, because the essence of disbelief is ingratitude to Allah Azza wa Jalla. So there are many verses in the Quran uh, where Allah speaks about you know, this idea of you know, you know. Uh, for instance, he says, "In takfu, wa in Allah wa ankum." If you disbelieve, in takfu, if you are ungrateful, then Allah is not in need from you. Wala yawa al-ibadihil kufr. But it's just that He doesn't like kufr or ingratitude, or disbelief on behalf of His slaves. So this verse is very important. Allah is speaking about um, speaking to human beings. Who have the choice of kufr and iman, kufr and shukr, being grateful or ungrateful. And he reminds us that look, if you wind up taking the path of ingratitude, in takfu, Allah is free of your of need from you. He never needed anything from you in the first place. So we're not doing um, this this story of faith doesn't have to be that doesn't have to do with um, doing favors for Allah. Allah doesn't need any of that. But why does he want us not to choose the path of ingratitude? Just Allah doesn't want that for you. That's part of his mercy. Not that he needs anything from us. And then the opposite of that, so we're talking about kufr in this verse. The opposite, Allah says, in tashkuru, uh, lakum. But if you are grateful, then Allah is pleased with that for you. So again, this verse says, in takfuru, and um, tashkuru, there's two contrasts. In the beginning in takfuru, if you are ungrateful, Allah is free of need from you, but He doesn't want you to be that way. And then on the other side, in tashkuru, if you are grateful, um, then Allah is very pleased with that. So Allah wants us to find faith. Allah wants us to pass the test. Allah wants us to be grateful to Him. He doesn't need us to be. He's free of any. He's ghani. He's al ghani. He's free of any need of that. So again, uh, reminding you that shaitan, this is what he said about human beings. You will find You will find that most of them are not grateful. Now, it's very interesting when you compare and contrast certain statements in the Quran and they contain implicit lessons and I hope you've been sharing some gems in the last couple of sessions uh, along that line. But today, the gem I want to share with you is you know, this is a quote from Iblis. Iblis says, you will find that the majority of human beings are not grateful. Okay? So Iblis is looking at human beings, and he's looking at this idea of faith and disbelief, of shukr and ingratitude, and the central battle, uh, the central test of humanity. And he highlights aksar, he uses the term aksar, the vast majority of them. 
So he says, you will find that the vast majority of them uh, are ungrateful. So he's looking at the majority of human beings and he's highlighting that they will not be grateful. So that's his focus. That's what he's looking at. Now, there's an interesting verse where Allah speaks about humanity in the same terms, uh, whether they're grateful or not, and the terms of numbers. But what does Allah say? Allah doesn't say uh, he shifts the focus and he says it from a different perspective. So it's the same reality. You know, shaitan is speaking about the same reality that Allah is speaking about. Um, and that reality is that the majority of human beings um, or many human beings will uh, be ungrateful and will not believe. And that's a sad tragedy of humanity. Um, so shaitan, again, he says he's focusing, looking at the majority. They will not be grateful. Now, Allah looks at the same story, the same scenario in a different way. And to share with you that verse, if you don't know, um, it was a revelation or it was, it, was, it was something that Umar ibn al-Khattab had an interesting story with. Um, he had forgotten about this verse. And he was reminded when he was walking in the masjid and he found a person making dua. And this uh, story is in the Musannaf of Ibn Abi Shayba. Uh, so Umar says <clears throat> that a man was making dua and he was saying, Allahumma ja'alni min al-qaleel. He raised his hands and he says, Oh Allah, make me from the few. Al-qaleel. In Arabic, al-qaleel means few. So Umar was kind of surprised. It's not a typical dua. You don't hear that. Even today, you don't hear that in uh, the witr prayer or in, in the, by the imams and the masajid. And, Allahumma ja'alni min al-qaleel. Oh Allah, make me from the few. So Umar, he waited uh, until this person was done and he asked him, what were you talking about? Um, why were you making dua to be from the few? So this man, he replied to me, said, um, you know, uh, I read, you know, uh, he said, Inni sami'tu Allah yaqul, I heard or I read in the Quran that Allah said, and this is the verse. So Allah says that same reality of humanity. Allah says, wa qaleelun min ibadi yashakur. How few from my servants are those who are truly grateful. Wa qaleelun. So this man said to Umar, I wanted Allah to make me from those few that he references in the Quran. And Umar was so impressed and he says, Kullu nas min Umar. Every person knows more than Umar. But he learned something new. Although he had learned, he, had, he knew that verse, but he never made that connection. And it was something new for him at this moment. So, uh, coming back to the statement of Allah and the statement of Iblis, let's contrast that. Iblis says, and the reality is the same on the ground. Most human beings will uh, fail the test. So shaitan says, وَلَا تَجِدُ أَكْثَرُهُمْ شَاكِرِينَ You will find that most of them, the majority, kathir, will not be grateful. Allah says, on the other hand, the same reality. He could have said the same thing. But now Allah chooses the focus, shifts the focus to the positive. He wants to highlight those who are grateful. Shaitan's highlighting those who are ungrateful. He's proud of the fact that that's the majority. Allah wants to highlight those who are grateful, uh, those who pass the test. So he says in his beautiful language, his eloquent language, وَقَلِيلٌ مِنْ عِبَادِيَ الشَّكُوْ Few among my slaves are those who are grateful. So he doesn't care about the majority. He doesn't want to highlight them. He doesn't want to mention them. Allah wants to mention the few who are grateful. So he uses the term qali. So you can see, same reality. Two different uh, Allah and Iblis speaking about the same reality. The reality and the facts on the ground did not change. It's how you speak about it and who you highlight. And from what perspective do you mention that reality? There are two vastly different ways of stating that same reality. وَلَا تَجِدُ أَكْثَرُهُمْ شَاكِرِينَ so that should really inspire us. Allah is merciful. Uh, he's always highlighting the mercy. He's highlighting, um, you know, the believers who he wants us to emulate and the qualities that he wants us to emulate. And it's almost from the verse you can feel that Allah is proud of those few. 
He says, he doesn't say few men. He says, few from my servants, from my slaves, are those who are truly grateful. So the essence of Iman, one of the great essences of faith, is this idea of gratitude, shukr. Very, very important lesson. And that should be the, the ending lesson of Ramadan for us. So as I mentioned, the verses of the Quran where Allah says, speaks about Ramadan or fasting, begin with la'allakum tattaqun and they end with la'allakum tashkurun. That's an implicit lesson for us that all of our lives should revolve around these two lessons. Our lives should begin with taqwa and end with shukr. Our lives should begin with this awareness of Allah and end with this profound sense of gratitude for all the blessings of Allah that we enjoy. And that really is the essence of faith. Allah says, That Allah will not, uh, or the verse says, why would Allah give you punishment if you are grateful to him and you believe in him? Why would Allah need to punish you if you are grateful to him and you believe in him? Shukr and Iman. And then Allah says, وَكَانَ اللَّهُ شَاكِرٌ عَلِيمًا Allah is all appreciative and all knowing. Shakir comes from the same term, shukr. So one of the names, two names of Allah come from shukr. Shakir and shakur. And they don't mean that Allah is grateful. He doesn't have anyone to be grateful towards. Um, you know, gratitude means you're grateful for a blessing upon you. But here it means appreciative. Allah appreciates iman. Allah appreciates service. Allah appreciates sadaqah. Allah appreciates worship. So Allah is ash-shakur and ash-shakir. Wa kana Allah shakiran alima. So Allah wants us to be appreciative of Him and be grateful to Him. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to bless all of us uh, and give us the tawfiq to realize these two great lessons of Ramadan, the lesson of taqwa and the lesson of shukr. And I hope everyone's Ramadan is going well, and I hope everyone ends uh, the last few days remaining of Ramadan strong. Uh, I ask Allah to accept all of your prayers. I ask Allah to give us Laylatul Qadr, and I ask Allah to give us a blessed Eid. Uh, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.